Hi everyone, it's Lisa Mears. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, I'm going to be making three cards using some products in Pretty Pink Posh's May 2023 release. This release is packed full of birdhouse and bird related products as well as get well soon and graduation products. But in this video, I'll be focusing on the birdhouse products and making three cards that can be used for any occasion. I previously released a video showing all of the products in the May release, and I'll link it at the top right corner of this video if you're interested in watching it. And I'll also link it in the description box below. I do want to let you know that these cards are part of a Pretty Pink Posh blog hop where you'll have the chance to win a gift certificate to the Pretty Pink Posh store. And to find out more information about the blog hop, you'll need to just head over to my blog at lisamearsdesigns.com to find out more. So let's take a look at some of the products from the May release that I'll be using in my video today. First off, we have the Swiss Dots stencil, which is a one layer stencil. The pattern consists of a trio of dots in a triangular shape throughout the stencil. I will also be using the layered Birdhouses stencil, which is a four layer stencil that will make a beautiful pattern of birdhouses on your cardstock. I'll be using the Spring Birdhouses 4x6 stamp set. The stamp set has three birdhouses as well as a branch, as well as the A Little Birdie stamp set. This is a 3x5 stamp set and it has five birds on it and these pair very well with the birdhouses. I'll also be making a card with the decorative birdhouse dies. So if you like die cutting, these dies are perfect for that. And then there's also the stitched birds that will pair well with the birdhouse dies. So for my first card, I'm starting out using the Swiss Dots stencil and I cut a piece of cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I'm going to be stenciling on the Squeezed Lemonade Distress Oxide ink. Next, I'll remove the stencil and I'll add that same ink just to the edges of that white cardstock just to add some more depth to the card. I'm not going to cover the center, just adding the yellow around the edges. And then I'll set that card panel aside. Next, I'm going to bring in the decorative birdhouse dies. And I want to show you that you can use the heart that's included in the die set to make a window for your birdhouse. There is also this little door, and you can also use this little flower as well. So there's three options there and there's three different birdhouses. I'm just going to be using the one that you see here on my table, which I die cut out of some pink cardstock as well as some teal cardstock. And I'm just adding some ink to the edges of the cardstock just to add some more depth. So I'm using the same color ink as the cardstock. So for the pink cardstock, I'm just finding a pink ink from my stash to ink up the edges with. The ink that I'm using is the scrapbook.com pink lemonade ink. And then for the teal cardstock, I'm going to do the same thing with the mermaid ink. And the cardstock that I'm using is from the scrapbook.com sherbet paper pad. I will have links to all of the supplies that I use in this video down in the description box below. Once I've inked up all of the edges of my die cuts, I am going to spray them with the Sheer Shimmer Spritz. This is the Frost Shimmer. That's just gonna put a little bit of sparkle on these die cut pieces. Next, I'm gonna take the heart and I'm going to die cut the middle part of this birdhouse so that I have a heart-shaped opening. I'm going to do the same thing to the teal cardstock. So I'll die cut that heart out of there. And then once both of those are die cut, I'm going to use the teal heart outline for the pink birdhouse. Now my card is just going to consist of one birdhouse, but if you wanted to create another birdhouse with the teal and then the pink heart, you can totally do that. I'll come back to those birdhouses, but in the meantime, I'm going to take a piece of green cardstock and I'm going to cut a little hill from the bottom of it. So my cardstock is actually cut to four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I just cut that stitched border out of the bottom, and I'm just inking up that green cardstock with some green ink to add some more depth. 
I'll set that aside and I'm also going to be bringing in the Pretty Pink Posh stitched strips and I'm going to use the thin strip for the stand for my birdhouse. As I said, I'm going to be working with the pink birdhouse only. So I did die cut the birdhouse again out of the pink cardstock so I can have a back for my birdhouse. Since it has that heart window, I wanted to be able to see pink through the window rather than my stenciled card background. So I'm going to add the stitched strip that I die cut out of the teal cardstock for the birdhouse stand. I'm going to glue that to the bottom center of the card. And notice that I just snipped off the bottom of that stitched border. I didn't need the whole thing. And then I'm adding the grassy border, that little hillside border, to the bottom of that card. And then I'm just going to start building the birdhouse, but I'm not going to glue it just yet. I'm going to add the layers in some of the pink and the teal. And I'm going to use an acrylic block just to hold the bottom two layers in place so that I don't have to glue them just yet. But what I do want to glue down is that large pink die cut piece which is the back side of my birdhouse. I'm not gluing those border pieces down yet because I will be adding foam to them as well as the top layering piece because I am turning this into a shaker card. Now you don't have to make yours a shaker card, but if you wanted to do a shaker card, you will need to cut a piece of acetate so that it fits over the back side of that heart. So you can see I just trimmed down a piece of acetate and just cut some of the sides away from that acetate so that it would fit on the back of this pink birdhouse piece. So now I'm going to add some of the rainbow shimmer sequins. These are new from Pretty Pink Posh. and I'm going to add them directly to the birdhouse that's glued to the card. And as I said, if you don't want to do this step and make it a shaker, you can omit all of this foam part as well as omit the sequins. And you can just glue the top layering piece of the birdhouse directly on to the pink piece that's already glued to the card. So I'm just adding some thin foam strips right around that heart opening. And then I'm also going to add some along the edges of that birdhouse just as you see me doing, just so that I can make sure that when I add this to my card that it does lay flat. You want to make sure that your foam is all connected around that heart so that none of the sequins fall out. So once I add all of the foam to my pink birdhouse top, I'll go ahead and remove the backing and I'm going to cover up the sequence. So I'll just align this pink piece up with the piece of the birdhouse that's already glued to my card front. So just line it up making sure all of those sequins are in the center and then just place it right on top. So I left the other pieces of the birdhouse off purposely because as I said, I knew I was making a shaker card and since the center of the birdhouse has dimension, I need to make sure that these scallop and straight pieces also have dimension to them. So I went ahead and added some foam to the back side of the scalloped roof line and then I added it to the card. And then I did the same thing with the scallop at the bottom of the birdhouse just line it up and add that to the card as well and then those pink strips will also have foam on them and I will add those where they belong on the birdhouse as well. Because these pieces are so thin you will need to make sure you're using a very thin piece of foam and the foam I'm using is 1 8 of an inch. Next I'm going to add this teal heart border that cut out when I cut the heart out of the center of the teal birdhouse. So I'll add that to the center and then I'm going to work on the birds. So the stitched birds actually come with three birds. I'm only going to be using two of them but I did die cut all three out of some purple cardstock and I'm just inking up the edges. I die cut the body of the bird out of a darker purple and then the wings out of a lighter purple so there's some nice contrast there and then I'm just going to glue the wing to the body of the bird and I'll do that for all three. 
Now you can take that dye again and die cut black for the eye as well as orange for the nose. But rather than working with those small die cuts, I went ahead and just took an orange Copic marker and colored the nose on all three of my birds. And then for the eye, I just took a very thin black Sharpie and just put a dot for the eye. Next, I'm going to bring in a white gel pen and just add some accents for the birds. I'll go ahead and glue two birds onto the birdhouse. And because part of the bird is hanging off of the birdhouse, I'm going to add a little piece of the foam adhesive to the backside. That way that the bird lays flat on the card. And I'll do that for both of my birds. I'm going to add some flowers to my birdhouse using the Pretty Pink Posh Spring Foliage die set. I already had some of the leaves die cut and I'm just adding some accent marks using a white gel pen. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the leaves to the birdhouse and I'm going to go ahead and add the flowers. I previously colored these flowers up in a video I released a while ago when these dyes first came out. So I already had a few extra already colored in my stash. I think adding flowers to the birdhouse, it just adds that extra special touch. I'm adding the sentiment from the A Little Birdie stamp set and the sentiment says you're the tweetest. Just stamping it onto the card in some black ink. And then I'll add this entire card layer to an A2 size card base. So my card base measures four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Finally, I'm going to add some of the rainbow shimmer sequins that are the same sequins that are inside of that birdhouse. I'm just gonna add a few of them to the front of the card. And here's a final look at my first card. So moving on to my second card, I'm going to be using the Spring Birdhouses stamp set and I'm going to be making a slimline card. So I went ahead and stamped out my images onto some Bristol Smooth cardstock, and I stamped them out with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I'm using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens to do some watercoloring. So for the leaves, I added the May Green color, and I'm blending that color with the blender marker. If you don't have a blender marker, you can always use a water brush to blend the colors. But the blender marker is simply a marker that has a blending solution in it that allows you to blend the color without using water. For the branch, I'm using the mid brown as well as the blender. So this stamp set includes three birdhouses and I'm going to be using two of them for my card. So this birdhouse has some leaves on it and I colored them with the same colors that I colored the branch. I'm going to make this birdhouse pink, so I'm just outlining the birdhouse in some of the peach pink color and using my blender marker to blend that color towards the center. So it'll be dark on the edges and it will be lighter towards the center. The trim is going to be in the lemon yellow. So I'll add some of the lemon yellow and then fill that in, blend it out with the blender marker. I wanted to keep my coloring fairly simple. So as you have probably noticed, I'm only using one color plus the blender to color my birdhouse. And I did the same thing with the leaves and the branch. If you wanted to use two colors to bring in a darker color and a lighter color, you can totally do that. But I just wanted to keep it simple by just using one color because you can get various shades of that color just by blending it out with either the blender marker or a water brush. So these little circle hooks with the line, those are just to hold the birdhouse so that it's up in the air hanging from the tree. I went ahead and colored them, although I don't end up using them on my card. And here's the second birdhouse that I'm using from that stamp set. I'm coloring up the roof line with the turquoise green marker. I do go over it a second time just to get a little bit of a darker color. 
I'm also going to color the same turquoise green on the bottom there and blend that out. And I'm also going to be bringing in the yellow marker. So again, this is the lemon yellow. And just coloring up the edges and then using my blender marker to blend towards the center. I'll color the flower up in the peach pink color. So just outlining the petals and then using the blender to blend that darker color towards the center so it's lighter towards the center. And then I'm going to use that turquoise green again for the smaller circle in the middle. And then the center is going to be the lemon yellow. I am going to include three birds using the same colors that I've used on the birdhouse. So this bird here is in the peach pink. So you'll see me spray some water here on my acrylic block and then just put some of the marker onto that water and then pick up with the blender marker that color that is on the acrylic block just to get a little bit lighter of that pink color. That way I can just add some variety to this bird since I'm just using one color marker. I wanted the wings to be a little bit lighter color than the center of the bird. I did use the orange for the nose and then I'll come in with the light blue color and color the second bird. To get a lighter color again I'm just dipping my marker into the water that I put on the acrylic block and then picking it up with the blender to add the lighter blue color to the bird. And then finally with my third bird, I'm using the lemon yellow color and coloring this last bird. I will use the peach pink and add a little rosy cheek to all three birds and then just blend that with the blender. I stamped a few flowers from the Spring Flowers stamp set. This is an older stamp set and I'm just coloring them all up the same color using the peach pink and the blender. And then I'll add the lemon yellow for the centers. Next, I'm going to use the Pretty Pink Posh Layered Clouds Stencil. This is a two layer stencil and it will give you some nice layered clouds on the cardstock. I am making a slimline card, so my white cardstock is cut to three and a quarter by eight and a quarter. And notice that the stencil is six inches by six inches square, so it doesn't fit the actual slimline line size but that's okay because what I'm going to do is first off I'm going to use some mint tape from scrapbook.com to mask off that bottom edge of the stencil that way when I ink up these clouds using my distress oxide tumbled glass ink when I get to the bottom I don't accidentally go over that straight edge and get blue ink on the bottom of that cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that first layer and then I'm going to line up the second layer and I'm going to use the same color ink on this stencil. Also I'm going to mask off the bottom cloud because the bottom cloud of that stencil, it's not a full cloud, it's actually cut off so there's a straight edge. And since I want full clouds to extend the entire length of that cardstock, I'm going to just mask it off so that I don't get any half clouds until I get to the very bottom. All right, so I'm applying the same color ink and then once I finish, I'm just gonna remove my mask, remove the stencil, and now I'm ready to do the bottom part of that cardstock. So I'm just going to line up my first stencil and I'll use the same color ink to finish up the rest of this cardstock. Now if you think that you might end up inking above the top edge of that stencil, you can always take your masking tape and put some tape over that straight edge so that you don't get random lines of ink beyond the top edge of that stencil. But I didn't do that. I felt like I had pretty much control over my ink blending brush and I wasn't getting any extra ink above that top edge. So now that I've finished that first stencil, I'll go ahead and remove it and add the second one. And you can see here, I'm adding some masking tape to the top of the stencil because there are some of those clouds up at the top that aren't full clouds. So I don't want to accidentally ink up any portion of those clouds. 
And once I finish inking the entire piece of cardstock, I'll go ahead and remove my stencil. You can see all of the layered clouds on that cardstock. So I took a slimline scallop frame die. This is also from Pretty Pink Posh, and I die cut it out of some pink cardstock, and I added it to my cloud layer. And now I'm adding my stamped images to the card. I did end up stamping and coloring another branch, as you see there. Once I have them where I want them, I'll go ahead and add them to the card. I am tucking the branches under the scalloped border because I don't want them just to line up straight with the border edge because I don't think it would look right. I wanted to tuck them under and you can see that some of the edge of that branch is extending beyond the card, which I can just snip off a little bit later. So when I added the scalloped border, I didn't fully glue it all the way down to the card. I was able to leave a little bit of room there so that I can tuck those branches underneath. I am stamping my sentiment, you're so tweet, at the bottom of the card. I was hoping I would be able to fit three of the birdhouses on this card, but there just wasn't enough room, so I went ahead and just put the sentiment there at the bottom. I am adding two of the birds, one for each of the birdhouses. I didn't have enough room to add the yellow bird. I thought about adding it at the top of the branch at the very top of the card, but I just didn't think it looked right, so I chose to leave it off. I'm also adding some of the pink flowers to the branches. And then I'm just going to use a black Sharpie pen with a very thin tip and I'm just going to draw a line from the top of the birdhouse to the branch so that it looks like it's hanging from the tree. Next I'm going to add that to a slimline card base. So my card base measures three and a half by eight and a half inches. And that completes my slimline card. So for my next birdhouse card, I'm using the layered birdhouse stencil from Pretty Pink Posh, which is a four layer stencil, which will allow you to use different color inks on different parts of the birdhouse so that it looks like it's more dimensional. I'm also going to bring in a sentiment from the Just a Note stamp set, and I'll also be using some of the music notes on that stamp set. So I'm starting out with layer A, and I did cut my cardstock to six inches by six inches, which is the exact size of the stencil. And I'm using the Distress Oxide Spun Sugar ink. So it's a very light ink. I love this color pink. It's so soft and pretty. Next, I'm going to add layer B, and I'm just going to line it up in the same spot and this is going to be the little door for the birdhouse or the little birdhouse opening and I'm adding the Distress Oxide Picked Raspberry ink which is a little bit brighter pink. Then I'm going to remove that layer and I'm going to come in with layer C. This one is going to be the roof line as well as the bottom frame for the birdhouse. I'll line that stencil up and I'm going to use the squeezed lemonade for this stencil. Next I'm going to remove that stencil and I'm going to add my last stencil which is layer D and I'm going to use the picked raspberry again. So if you haven't used Pretty Pink Posh layering stencils before, you really need to check them out because there are so many to choose from. And a lot of their laying, layering stencils are either three or four layers, which will allow you to apply several different color inks to create a nice dimensional and colorful look for your cards. And they make for such quick cards because you can technically just use a stenciled background, add a sentiment to it, and be done. But of course, I am going to step it up a notch and add some stamps and some die cuts as well. So now that I finished all four stencils, I do want you to notice the yellow parts of the birdhouse where I overlaid the yellow on top of that pink color. It kind of faded out the pink color. So I'm just going to take that stencil and put it back over my background and I'm going to add that pink color again right over top of that yellow just to make it stand out a little bit better. And now I'm finished with inking up my stencil so I'll go ahead and remove that. 
And now I'm going to work on my sentiment. I am going to emboss the sentiment with some white embossing powder. So I just used some powder to add some powder to my black cardstock, which will help so that the embossing powder doesn't stick where there's no embossing ink. I'm just going to go ahead and use some Versamark ink and stamp it down and then add the white embossing powder over the sentiment. And then I'll use my heat tool and I will heat set the sentiment and I will cut that down with my scissors so that it is a straight edge in a rectangular shape around that sentiment. I will use a rectangle die to cut out the portion of the birdhouse stenciled background that I want to use on my card and then I'm going to add some layers together. So I'm adding the birdhouse stenciled background to the pink cardstock which I cut to four by five and a quarter, and then I'll add that to a piece of teal cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm gonna bring in the hearts. These hearts were from the birdhouses from card one in this video when I cut out the heart centers of those birdhouses. I actually saved these hearts and I'm going to use them here and I'm just going to layer them together and add them to the card. I'm going to add my sentiment right over top of the hearts. So the, the sentiment says, you make my heart sing. I also colored up some more birds off camera. This time I used two different colors for the birds. I used the peach pink and the turquoise green. And I'm also adding some of the music notes to this card. Finally, I'll add this layer to an A2 size card base. So all supplies that I've used in this video will be linked down in the description box below as well as on my blog and you'll also find up close pictures of all of my cards over on my blog and there will be a coordinating blog post in the description box below. Be sure to follow along on the Pretty Pink Posh blog hop where you have a chance to win a gift certificate to the Pretty Pink Posh store. You can head over to my blog for more information about the blog hop. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like videos like this, be sure to click that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications so that you'll be notified every time I release a new video. Thanks for watching everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.